everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. We're back in our workshop today for another laser cutting project, and this time it's a bit of a prop replica. Yeah, we, we are both fans of Westworld, yes. which is, you know, season two wrapped up not long ago. Mm -hmm. And I found that season two had a lot more cool props than the first season. I remember you walking into the office after like, even the first episode, and you're like, oh, I want to make this, I want to make yeah. that, I want to make that. And without spoiling the show, because yeah, many of you spoiler played, free, spoiler yeah. free, uh, there is a scene in the season where one of the characters is handed a prop, and I think it's fair to say it is a a data card. Yeah, memory card, data card, whatever you want to call it. But it's uh, this guy right here. You made so it. I decided that I needed to make this. Um, it was just a neat little hand prop, and I kept looking at it, and I was like, I think I might know how to make this and make it look like spot on to the original. Mm. Um, and so I did a lot of screen grabs. Yes, <laughs> yes. It appears in uh, a couple of times in the scene. Yeah. Um, and you, so this is the prop making process. You're literally taking screen grabs, and you're mm -hmm. using people's, the actors' interactions with the prop to figure out size and scaling. Yeah. Now, sometimes if, if there's something you can, like, a known... Uh, like say there's a pack of cigarettes there or something that you can take a known measurement off of, you can use the measure tool in Photoshop uh, and get pretty accurate measurements on things. Mm -hmm. uh, this case, I really didn't have a good reference to size. So I had to just kept messing around and I came to the conclusion that it is definitely credit card size. Okay. Because I tried business card at first, this is a little, definitely the credit card size. So I started looking around some more and I found these great uh, uh, anodized aluminum credit card blanks or, or credit card size. And they're just this really, really thin uh, aluminum that then has an anodized coating on it. Now, this is something a little bit new for us because you wanted to use this as an example to test our laser cutters uh, anodizing etch uh, etch anodized aluminum abilities. Right. Uh, we can't cut through a sheet of aluminum with this laser cutter. Right. Uh, we can't cut through even something like this thick. So you were lucky to find this pre-cut mm -hmm. metal. Yeah, the, the universal laser systems that we have is a 60 watt. Mm. It will cut like a lot of stuff up to like a quarter of an inch, sometimes thicker depending on the material. But for this type of laser, cutting metal is not something yeah. that most of them can do. Right. Um, but it will burn off the anodized uh, layer or if you have something that's painted, you could burn off the paint. So this is the first time we've done metal. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what I did is I laid, I basically, uh, I use the screen grabs to basically draw everything out in vector form. So it's a lot of like just drawing these little traces took me like two days. Because, and of course there's no shot that's like the whole thing. You have to piece together certain corners of it from different shots and stuff like that. But I think I got it pretty accurate. And this is just trial and error using your vector drawing program. Mm -hmm. It can be Inkscape, it can be Illustrator. Yeah, I actually just did it right in Cinema 4D, which is oh. a 3D modeling, but you can totally do vectors in it. So any of those you can do. Um, exported it into uh, Illustrator, uh, colored any of the places that get burned off with raster etching uh, black. So that, that will be just signifies that that will be the burn off portion. So basically, what it end up is the shiny or, or gold parts, and then the silver is the etched off parts. Mm. Um, and uh, I did a little bit of a different uh, uh, attack on this where I had multiple layers in the in the pro, in the uh, Illustrator file, which I haven't done before. And that's something interesting because this is this is a different process because it's almost like printing when you're removing yeah. material. And in fact, the best way to explain that maybe actually take a look at that Illustrator file and those layers you're working with and do a test cut of this and look at that process. All right, so we're doing something a little different than we normally have. I used a lot more layers uh, in this particular setup. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to hide everything except for card actual, which is, um, basically the outside of the card, and we're gonna cut holes to make a template. Uh, since these are pre-cut uh, cards, we need to be able to line them up correctly with all of the other graphics. So we're cutting this out of our mat board or chipboard, and then we'll drop the cards inside. Once that's done, we're gonna bring back the cards. So we have uh, the traces uh, and the outline to get that outer part. And then I have another one called uh, card bleed here, which is, actually a little bit bigger than the card itself so that it makes sure that it etches to the very edges of the card. Um, and so all the black areas are gonna be rastered or burned off and then the white areas are gonna be the actual card color. Um, so then we'll send those over 
burn those. And then we're gonna hide these guys and then bring back the logo. We're gonna flip the cards in the template and then burn these on. So the template will serve multi uh, purposes for aligning both uh, the, the graphics and the graphics to each other so that everything's in line. So that, that was a pretty good representation of like the workflow with that. And I did, you may notice from the footage that we did something a little different. I had this guy set up. I like it. Because the problem is most of the time, most of the projects we've done before, we are cutting the shape and whatever etching, writing, whatever was on it at the same time. But since we can't cut aluminum, we had to find a way to register this so that all the graphics lined up and was repeatable. Right. And especially since we did logo on, I did the logo on the other side, uh, we needed to be able to, to get that in the you know right position and everything. And so, repeatability is what you're talking about right now. Yeah. This is a jig. So uh, all I did is this is just some chipboard or mat board. I didn't want to use corrugated cardboard because I thought it would grab too much like trying to get it in mm. and out. Um, so we can just drop this in here. I just use a little tape donut to get it out. I tape this down in the laser cutter. So anytime I do these, I could just use this with my corresponding file and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so the first one I did was just on the clear. This is more screen accurate because if you look at it, uh, if you, you get a perfect shot where you can definitely see it's silver on silver, but this is kind of subtle. Um, it doesn't pop as much as I wanted it to. And I think that they actually had the same problem on screen because you'll notice that every shot of it is like at an angle. To so get the best reflection. The yes. Yeah, so I went ahead and I did a version also with the gold, which I really, really like. Yeah. And uh, since we never got to see the back of the card, I took the, the liberty of making the logo and putting it back there too. So I think that that's appropriate. I also so. noticed that on your test cuts here, you have some stickers about power settings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I assume that with an anodized coating, it's a pretty standard thickness. It's an anodized coating that you want to remove to get to the actual metal. Yeah. Did you have the experiment? Are there presets? Uh, there kind is, of setting? Uh, in the material database for the universal laser systems, uh, there is a anodized metal setting that you can oh, just okay. pick. And I found that the base setting was pretty good, but I ended up um, upping the power like maybe 20, 30 percent because I found it just burn off a little cleaner and a little sharper, and I like that. But that's fairly normal. I mean, it's a baseline, a good place to start. And it didn't affect the edge quality of of no. your of your raster there. No, and that's another. Uh, the edge quality is also a good point. I found like uh, the detour are a little sharper when I up the power. But the other thing uh, that I also did is I made sure that the outer part that gets burned is a little oversized, it's bigger than the card, so that there wasn't any remnants or slivers yeah. and it burnt the whole thing cleanly. Yeah, and this is one of the benefits of using a 60 watt laser like this, because these are rasters and they are time consuming on, on hobby lasers. This it was goes pretty, quick. pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. So you got your data card prop replica from Westworld season two, Hopefully, just one of many, the first of many. I've got props some other ideas that you're gonna work yeah. on. Yeah. That show. Right. Awesome. Very cool. You can do this yourself. Just take a screen grab, you know, watch the show, uh, get access to a laser cutter, and you'll provide a link maybe to where people can find these these types I, of cards. Yeah, they, I can. I, I'll put some links in the comments. There's some on eBay and stuff, but I'll, I'll put some info up there. Very cool. Well, another prop project done. Thanks for watching. We'll have more prop projects in the future, and we'll see you next time.